Hello guys. Okay, so this is going to be kind of like a life update. I'm going to talk about my plan and how it's been going and things that I've found and just a lot of things. So I don't even know if everything I want to talk about is going to get covered, but I am. I'm also going to announce real quick the March challenge. If you are doing the monthly challenges this year, the 2015, here we go, March challenge is um, to move your body for 10 minutes every day. Uh, walking, jogging, dancing, stretching, Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, um, hey, Grocery shopping. You know what I do at the groceries? I put my litter and my dog food and any of the big heavy things in first so that I'm pushing something heavy around the entire time. Um, you know, uh, running with the, like running and playing around with the kids, going to the park, like all of those things count. It's just 10 minutes a day. Um, and I know you're like, but Sonia, it's the third. And that's true. On the Facebook group, this got posted right away. And so we all knew to start on March First, I apologize about not getting a video up, but life has been insane. And I really just can't guarantee a video or a blog. I think I'm gonna I have to make a blog post as well. So, um, anyway, <laughs> so that's what's been going on. For me personally, it's been working really well. First of all, I am in a better physical place, body, pain, everything wise, than I have been in a long time. I feel like Maybe a year and a half ago, there was like this slow decline in like mid-2013 that was kind of getting worse and worse. And then I got sick a couple of times. Um, I got sick, like, like you know, like a cold um, in August of 2013. And I got sick again in November. And then like right at the end of November, early December, I was extremely ill and it knocked me out. So 2014 was basically kind of like sliding deeper <laughs> into pain and into like this pit. And I feel like, or at least the first three fourths of 2014. And I feel like towards the end of 2014, the fog, the mental fog started to lift and it's been about just slow movement, just kind of like picking yourself up and moving forward. So but I feel like the same slow creep in has been happening in the opposite way. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so I'm feeling better and better, and that's awesome. This 10-minute-a-day movement challenge has been good because a lot of times I tend to want to go 100% or 110%. Go hard or go home. It's always been, like, my personal motto. Um, the problem with that is when you're in recovery, if you go hard, you might knock yourself out for the next five, six days. And so it makes it very hard to form any kind of good habits when you're physically unable to create a schedule or a routine or habitual movements. So I have really enjoyed the 10 minutes a day. It gets my blood moving, it makes me feel good, but it does not overdo anything, and it really helps, uh, like, motivate, but not burn out. So, you'll notice on the side of my calendar, and you're going to see a couple of things, but on the side of my calendar, if this is my March calendar, for the first, it says 10 minutes a day. For that first week, all, my only goal is 10 minutes a day. Um, first of all, let me just say, the challenge is over. Now I'm talking about me personally. Uh, the challenge is move 10 minutes a day. Okay. Uh, me personally, my this week, my only goal is to move 10 minutes a day. The, on the first, I um, danced. I like did Zumba for 11 minutes. I do 11 minutes because I, fa I know it's probably only like three seconds, but I factor in the time it takes to touch my phone and put it down and start moving. So 11 minutes. Um, so I did Zumba moves and danced um, and then yesterday I did five minutes of Zumba and I jogged for six minutes. Really easy, really comfortable, slow, easy jog. And I feel great. Today I'm going to go for a walk with my Gipper and 
we usually walk for 45 to minutes to an hour so um if I want to do a jog or a dance later I might do it just because I really enjoyed it but it's not that big of a deal um but my only goal even if we don't go walking again is 10 minutes a day next week my goal is 10 minutes a day and two one hour sessions walking if I go to Zumba whatever I probably am not going to go to Zumba because so far I have been having the best of luck with moving and my sciatic nerve pain not kicking my butt and I know that a lot of like harsh um like abrupt movements and jog and like jogging it can hurt so I'm gonna try I'm probably gonna lay off Zumba for a little while so that I can really just get back into the swing of things and not knock myself out uh, I do hope to go back to Zumba when I'm doing Zumba at home I'm doing the moves that I know are not like I'm not jumping on it I'm not twisting on it too much I'm doing a lot of this side more than that side and stuff like that so um, I can just be more careful at home so that's then the next week I go back to just 10 minutes a day and then the fourth week I want to do 20 minutes a day and then the last three little days uh, it's just back to 10 minutes a day so I'm I'm bringing it back to easy like again and again and again it's really just about establishing a good healthy habit of movement every day it's not about pushing it it's not about losing weight it's not about getting ripped it's not about becoming a gladiator it is really and truly and honestly just about moving so it's been really working and I'm really happy my food plan has been amazing if you didn't watch my last hungry for more food plan uh, video like my new plan video um, I basically have a menu now that I choose my food from breakfast and lunch and I don't do snacks uh, like sugary, like cakes, whatever. I'm not doing yogurt right now. I'm not doing um, any of those kind of things. So I'm being very aware of sugar. I'm being very aware of triggers. And it's nice to have the menus because what I have been doing is picking my, like this is my breakfast for the week. And I know some people are going to be like, you need to change it up or you're going to get bored. If I desperately feel I want to change it up, I can go back to my menu and pick something off my breakfast menu. Um, those foods are in the breakfast section because they do not trigger a bend. For me, I can have toasted whole wheat bread at night and not feel starving and not feel like I want to eat the world. But if I have it in the breakfast, it tends to trigger a day of binging. So there are reasons the foods are in different sections and I can pick anything I want um, off of the breakfast and I can pick anything I want off of the lunch and have it and be very satisfied. Currently, my breakfast has been an egg white omelet with like loaded with spinach and mushrooms and you know, um, and then I'm using Bob's Red Mill Large Flake Nutritional Yeast as the cheese. It's delicious. It's amazing. I love that stuff. So, um, it's a good breakfast. It gets me feeling really full. I'm really excited. Uh, my lunches have been faux faux. I don't know how to explain that. Oh, okay. If you like faux, like uh, it's a noodle soup, I have uh, been faking the broth because I've actually made the broth several times, but it's a intensive very long time demanding thing and the last time I did it at the very end I burned it and I was just ticked and I wanted a fat I was like I was supposed to have my photo today so I basically just faked it and it came out amazing and I was like why am I spending all this time cooking it if I can fake it so I've been faking my pho. Um and I have it with tofu or boca burgers or some type of vegetarian meat substance I am currently pescatarian. I am not eating uh, red meat or pork or poultry. I am eating dairy and seafood. Um, though, to be honest, even the seafood is a little, uh, like, it's on its way out, I think. I'm So, yeah, I think I'm moving towards, like, an ovo-lacto vegetarian, which basically means a vegetarian who still eats um, dairy foods. There you go. Um, those choices are personal. They're just for me. They're not, they're not ethical necessarily. They're not necessarily, uh, they're just 
following the path that makes sense for me and the foods that make sense for me, that's the direction I'm going in. It's not set in stone. It might never happen. It just seems to be that way. Um, like I haven't eaten, I have tilapia on the menu at some point this week, but I haven't eaten any sort of um, seafood or meat or anything in a, in a in a week and a half or so. Like I think the last time I ate shrimp was like a week and a half ago. So it's kind of just happening. Anyway, um, so those are the food things. That is the exercise situation. Now on to life. I am making a very serious effort to take better care of myself. Um, basically, it's like when you don't feel good and you don't feel like taking a shower and you don't feel like getting out the bed and you don't feel like moving and so you don't, you generally get worse. When you don't feel good and you make yourself get up out the bed and you make yourself take the bath and you make yourself move, you do actually wind up feeling better. And I'm trying to implement that. Um, I, I am dressed a hundred percent today, like full on jeans and everything. I have my hair in a pony, not just tossed up in a bun. I, my hair, I did a treatment with coconut oil on it. I'm feeling really good about things and I want to continue that. Um, washing my face, taking extra good care, like not just washing my face, but like, you know, and then putting moisturizers on and putting like taking care of my face, washing my hands before I touch my face, like doing all the kind of things that like, you know, they're little things, but they make you feel better and, and you take care of yourself and you feel better. And I think that physical pain turns into mental and, and emotional depression when you let it take you there. And I know from personal experience, it's not always a let it, it's kind of more like it happens, but I feel like I need to make a very conscious effort to take back myself, to like reach in there, grab Sonia and pull her back and be like, no, like I'm not just going to give that away. So I'm, I'm making the effort. Um, choosing every day to tell myself that I'm not scared, that the anxiety will not win, that I am going to live and be happy and things are going to be great. And that's where we're going with this. Um, something I'm loving, I'm loving right now. I feel like my skin is not perfect, but we're coming out of like a phase. Um, and it's coconut oil. I love it. It's a solid. If you don't know about it, it's a solid. It is like, look, watch, whoop, instantly liquid. Like you just, the littlest bit of friction melts it down. I love it on my lips. I had this like really dry uh, part on my lips that hurts. Um, and that's why I started using it on my lips and it's awesome. It's really like helping that. Um, I don't know if I talked to you guys, but I was in this place of like reacting to everything. Like everything. I don't know, maybe a couple of years ago, I have never been, when I was young, I was allergic to all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, and I just kind of left them behind. I have never been allergic to stuff as an adult, uh, like smells and stuff, but I mean like physically. But lately, materials, soaps, um, shrimp, I'm like having allergic reactions to like almost everything. So, the last few times I had shaved, after I shaved, my skin got scaly red, burned, itched. It was like a, it was like having a very serious allergic reaction over my entire legs. So I kind of was like, oh, f that, sorry, um, and I kind of left it alone. And then I tried again. I tried this like natural stuff, and it just kept happening. And so I have changed what I'm doing. I am now using a very basic razor that doesn't have like a strip. It's got like these little pieces of rubber instead of like that medicated strip that's supposed to like soothe your leg. Cause I couldn't tell what I was reacting to. So I shave with either Johnson's baby soap, um, or my, um, 
if I have that on hand, I do. That's what I like to use. It's a bar soap, and it's like Johnson's baby soap bar. It's in a pink box. It's very gentle. Um, and I shave with that. And then, and with a razor that's got like three razors, but it's very basic. It's not all fancified. And then I rub coconut oil over my leg. And I've done it twice and had excellent results. I'm so excited because I feel like I can be a girl again and not be on fire because it felt like I was burning up. So very excited. So fun. It's fun to be girly when you like what you're doing. Um, I, I am clearing clutter. I feel like that's another thing. I think that, um, so much, so much is happening, right? I feel like I think that most of you guys know this, and if you don't, I'm going to tell you real quick. Um, I lived in southern Louisiana when Hurricane Katrina came through. Um, I lived in St. Bernard Parish, which was a parish that was actually equally as devastated as the Ninth Ward in New Orleans, and more devastated than um, any other area like metropolitan New Orleans or any, any other area. Uh, so that set, being said, um, everything I owned, I had my car, I had my clothes, I had some stuff in my trunk because I had, I was in the process of moving. Um, I had my daughter and my family and my two cats and everything I owned was destroyed. It was gone. Um, my mom, everything, that's, a lot of people were like, well, don't you have family? It's like, well, actually, when you're down here, like, it's a very tight-knit, everybody lives, like, my aunt lived, like, two blocks away, and my grandma lived, like, four blocks away, and, you know, it's, like, the whole entire area, everybody lost their entire house, all of their photos, all of their possessions, everything. Um, we do have one aunt that lives in another area about 30 minutes away, and she, um, uh, had damage, didn't lose everything, so we do have some photos, not not a whole lot, but we do have some. Uh, my sister had some photos, so we do have, like, that's, I do have a couple of baby pictures of, like, my daughter and stuff, but everything, gone. And I'm bringing that up because I think that, I think that that made it, like, I know, I have, I have no space on my phone because I don't want to get rid of photos. Photos, I back up to Snapfish, to Flickr, to a hard drive. It's like this thing that even after I know, I know, I know, I know that I have backed them up, I'm freaked out about deleting them from the original source. Um, you know, it's weird because on one hand, it was like, whatever, it's just stuff. But I think somewhere in me, it like triggered this like hoarding person, this hoarder. And I'm not, like I say it with a smile, but I'm really not minimalizing hoarding. I know that that's a problem. Um, and I feel like if I didn't have a family and I didn't have a wife and it was just me, I would be just in a home somewhere with tunnels through my stuff. Like it's rough or it has been. I am getting so much better at it. Like I still have problems with anything I can put emotional attachment to. But for a while, it wasn't even like emotional. It was like, like nail polishes. Like I had like over 60 something nail polishes. And honestly, my nails are usually black, gray, or black with pops of color. Unless I'm like purposely doing my nails to go somewhere and match or be a rainbow, that's it. So I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> you know? Um, and like makeup and just like stuff stuff, I feel like um, I've been ready and I've been getting rid of it. I've been getting rid of stuff like crazy. Went to do my nails and I just reached in there, grabbed a color I love, which is actually called Grey's Anatomy by Wet n Wild, but I picked it out because I have, as a high schooler, I fell in love with a color called Down Low and everything was that color. <laughs> And it was this color. I've been looking for it and looking for it and looking for it. It's actually, I don't know if you can see it because of that, but it's like a, it's like a purpley pink gunmetal y kind of color. I love it. Anyway, so it's Grey's Anatomy by Wet n Wild. Finally found the color. That's the color I painted my nails. And I got it done. 
because I went in there after I had cleared it out. I just picked, like, I just opened a little drawer. I have 14 nail polishes now, including top coats and special coats and everything else. Picked out the color I wanted, picked out the, the bottom coat I wanted, or the, um, yeah, the, like, base coat I wanted, and bang, like, I did my nails. It's, I'm getting rid of makeup, I'm getting rid of so much stuff. I am, like I said, still having issues with, like, some stuff, but for, as far as, like, the junk and the daily stuff that you can buy at Walmart and, like, just the things that are not irreplaceable and the things that are not special. Like, yeah, I might like them, but they're not special. I'm letting them go. And I think it's really, really helping. So that feels good. I, and I, I don't know. It's like almost like when you heal this, you start to get better with other things. Um, 20 minutes in, we're getting to this. I know that I told you guys that, uh, my wife has been looking for a job. She left her other job on her job that she had been with for years March 3rd, I think it was, of or March 4th of last year. She got a job almost instantly, but it was not the best. Um, she stayed there for a while. She's been with a different company. She's been trying to get into a particular field, and she finally did. It's weird, because it's so, like, such a godsend, the way things unfold, and then Everything seemed great, and it seemed perfect, and then this other job she had been waiting for for years and wanting for years opened up literally the day after she accepted a position somewhere else. So it's a little like, did we make the wrong mistake? Did we push it? Did it go? Like, I don't know. So I don't think so. I think that life is just always going to kind of set you up to doubt yourself and you have to just kind of be willing to grab it and go. So I think that that is something my wife is much better at than I am. And so we're going to be fine. Uh, I do know that the job she's with will probably take us eventually to out to the country, which is something we've wanted. We've always wanted land, um, animals, you know, produce, uh, we definitely want land that, like, as our kids get older, they can have some land, put a home on it, have their family be with us but not in the house if they don't want to be, like, kind of thing. Like, just a, to kind of grow into a community of generations. And I think that's, like, the ultimate goal. And also, we are in the greater New Orleans area. We're in the, like, you know, suburban area around it. And crime is definitely seeing itself kind of, kind of get crazy. And, uh, I think that moving away, as sad as it makes me, because this is my home. I, I live literally only a block from where I grew up my entire life. Um, it, it's just so weird to see it change to the point of being willing to walk away from it. Um, uh, but I think that's where we're at, and uh, it's a strange place, but it's a good place. I mean, everything that's happening is good right now, and I, I refuse to like worry it into something bad. Um, and that's just kind of where I'm at. I really have to stay focused on being happy and on taking care of me. I want to paint more, I want to sell my art, I want to be who I have wanted to be for a very long time and every time it starts to happen I allow life to get me in a frenzy to steal it from myself and I refuse so this is my life update and I think it's going pretty well and I'm hopeful and excited um I I feel like my plan has been excellent my movement is back, you know, not on track to what it was, but it's back on a new track. And I don't know, I'm excited. I think it's going to be good.